Brothers and sisters, over the years, I have grown in my love and affection for St. John Vianney. At first, I think I was probably a bit intimidated by him because, I mean, really, he's a bright light shining uh, in the life of the church. He's, his life, his complete dedication to his priestly duties was astounding. Something like listening to 13, 14 hours of confession every day, you know, barely sleeping. Um, living a real life of penance out of love for those who were coming to confession. Uh, as the scriptures say, you know, some things could only be casted out by by fasting and by uh, by prayer. And I think that he fasted a lot. He prayed a lot for the very people who lined up from all over France, all over uh, other parts of Europe, uh, coming to him by foot, coming to him by train, coming just... It's, it's what happens when someone is so dedicated to God, so filled with the Holy Spirit that it really becomes a huge light going out. It, it reminds me of St. John the Baptist. You know, he, he did go around preaching, but then eventually he, that he went to this one spot, this River Jordan, and then all that area used to search him out. This is what will save the church. You know, it's the radical holiness of, of each one of us, not just priests, nuns, uh, but radical holiness of families, a family that is completely dedicated to God, where, where the whole life of the house is centered on God, it, that brings a really vibrant, creative culture in the family. It's a bright light, it attracts people in. Uh, same thing obviously for priests like St. John Vianney, uh, so radically centered on, on the Eucharist and on the Lord, that it's like a huge gravitational pull, which obviously is the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is just released with that kind of holiness in, in a very powerful way. And so if we're looking ahead to what will save the church, what will renew the church, it's a revolution of holiness. It's, it's, that's, it's the most practical thing. It's the most practical thing. Uh, we began our Dominican chapter uh, for the Irish province uh, to, to make decisions for the future. And when I preached the opening homily, what really kept coming up for me in prayer to say to the brothers, which really to say to myself, is that the most practical thing I could do uh, is pray. Prayer is not something airy-fairy. Our contact with Christ, our ability to, 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 to be in communion with Christ through prayer and the sacraments is the engine that drives us. It's, it's the engine that, 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 that fills us up with the energy and love that we need to, to not withdraw from the contemporary needs of society, but to, to actually go into society, but to be fully available and to be able to be sent to society and to our families and to our offices and to wherever we are. We need to find times of retreat. We need to find times of retreat every day, times of solitude, because it's only there that we, we could withdraw our faculties, our mind from the busyness of the world and, and, and direct it to God. We're not superhuman, so, so we have to find times of solitude to be alone with God, whether it's in front of the blessed sacrament, which for me is my preference, which I think should be the priority, but we, we may not have that ability and opportunity, so in the solitude of my bedroom, in the solitude of my home. Uh, let us create a place, a sanctuary. My own prior, Father John Harris, um, in Ireland, many of you would know him, but he, when I was, a, well, I'm still a young priest, but when I first was ordained, you know, and he would have mentioned this to us when in formation, he's, he would always say, where do you get your emotional energy from? Where is the scent of your emotional energy? Is it on people? Is it on the brothers? Is it on, as I said, people outside? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Uh, is it affirmation? Where is that emotional center? And, you know, that I've always been thinking about that. And, and I've been really, myself person, trying to make my emotional center the tabernacle, Jesus Christ, the Lord. You know, that relationship between us and the Lord has become so real that we prefer the aff affirmation from Jesus as opposed to affirmation of others. That we would prefer the love of Jesus to the love of others. And only then can we be free. And St. John Vianney, his emotional center was Jesus Christ. 
uh, he, he just prayed so much himself in front of the Blessed Sacrament. He spoke so highly of the Eucharist. He was a priest. He understood the gravitational center of his entire life was the Eucharist. And so I think that he's a bright light uh, to, to show us. And I do encourage you to read up of his life. He, he's tough, <laughs> as you could imagine. He's like a John the Baptist. So, so don't be put off by him. But he's behind the kind of tough exterior. He's, you'll get to know him. He's gentle. He's, 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 he's full of life. He's full of uh, joy. And, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a compassionate man. Hence his hours in confession. And he's a model for all of us priests. So, but he's unique. Not every pri no, priest can be like that. But let's pray for our priest today on his feast day. May the Lord bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.